All right, so how are we doing so far? Is everybody totally mind blown, 4.0, all that container security, all that wonderfulness? I promise you um, I'm not going to let um, Mike or Dan has disappeared, but his jacket's here. So they'll be around. Um, they'll be here for the AMA. Um, so please uh, store up your questions, ask the questions during the break, do that. Um, we're going to switch gears a little bit um, because I know your mind is blown and you want to hear how this actually works in the real world. Um, so we're going to have um, a case study now from Horizon Assets. And Brian Salsman yep. is going to be talking with my dear friend Mark Borstein, who is from Tremolo Security. Um, again, there won't be Q&A afterwards, but they'll both be out in the area afterwards to do that. And then we're going to stage what is always the most fun part to stage is a series of lightning talks from all of the sponsors. I promise to give them each five minutes so they paid for your lunch and all and your dinner and your drinks. And we're going to do six of them before and six of them after lunch. So um, I'm going to have them all come up here and then we're going to rope them off the stage if they take more than their five minutes. So I'll help me hold them to that. So without further ado, our first case study of the day, um, Brian, take it away. Okay, great. Um, so I'm here today to describe Horizon's venture into the private cloud uh, with OKD and Tremolo Security. Um, if you'll forgive the fact that my worker nodes don't auto scale at the moment if, uh, for the definition of a private cloud. Okay, so um, one of my colleagues uh, was working with Theano Math Libraries and he would run a couple models at the same time and managed to seg fault both of them and was kind of frustrated uh, with that experience. And we thought, well, how about using Docker containers? Maybe we could give you better isolation. And that was pretty great. It solved the problem. But he was like, oh, I want to talk to a spreadsheet file. And I was like, all right, well, I'll use my account and map that drive. And it, you know, quickly, we started thinking, um, you know, what else could we use these Docker containers for? Um, so how can we orchestrate and manage them? How can we deal with resources? Uh, working on a project with other users, scaling up multiple containers, Docker wasn't enough. Um, we had more drivers for containers. Uh, one of them was my boss works with Nime, um, and it's, we have it installed for developers on their PCs. Um, every six months, they release new versions of Nime, and we were falling behind, you know, updating PCs, making sure they were all in sync with the server version. Um, this needed to access the SQL uh, database in the Windows world, as well as uh, Horizon shares, uh, Windows shares, and all of the permissioning and security that goes along with those shares. So a different user sees a different view of the same share. Um, hey, so, hey well, yeah. what is Nime? If you what can is, talk about it's, that for a little quick. It's like a little a workflow ETL tool, um, just if people are not familiar with that. So, um, so we kind of thought, like, how could we um, you know, do something with that to make that release cycle simpler and give it access to it? So uh, if you think about this, we wanted a private cloud solution that integrated to our Microsoft world. We want the security, identity management, onboarding users. We wanted all of this automated. I was one IT guy, and I didn't have the time to you know, kind of look after integrating and building a private registry into Kubernetes, dealing with the security issues, all of the things that might go along with doing this. I wanted a little bit of a shortcut and some help. Um, we looked at things like Mesosphere, um, CoreOS, uh, which you know, Red Hat bought, um, Rancher, uh, Rancher didn't quite do enough in terms of uh, managing Kubernetes for us. And then we liked, I had liked Ubuntu, uh, so I thought, why don't I start with Ubuntu and, and learn a little bit more about Kubernetes and what it does. We used um, a virtual machine with LXD containers. Um, it was great to get started. You just press a button and conjured up this entire Kubernetes cluster in a single VM. Um, it would eventually run out of disk space, but we thought, you know, we can always hire the enterprise people and help going forward. Um, so I kind of looked around at uh, that solution and I thought, oh, but I also need identity management. And I looked on the Kubernetes documentation page and they're like, well, there's a lot of cloud providers that AWS, Google, Azure, that does identity management with Kubernetes, but 
there was not a lot of identity management providers that would do something for a private cloud. And we weren't ready from a bunch of legal standpoints and other reasons to jump fully into the cloud. So I had a conversation with Mark. And I said, can we seamlessly integrate Windows shared drives and Kerberos access to Microsoft databases? Yes. I was like, wow, that's cool. Can we enable onboarding users and entitlements as self-service with human approval where needed? Do you have workflows to do all that? Yes. Um, how about a better solution for the registry and GUI registry viewer? Um, getting Kubernetes to talk to a registry was difficult for me and my novice experience dealing with Kubernetes. And uh, Mark said, have you tried CentOS Origin, or now OKD? Um, it's got a built-in registry and a GUI to look at what's in there out of the box. And I was like, wow, that's cool. Um, I need shortcuts like that. Uh, can we configure and deploy a CentOS Origin production cluster ourselves? Um, yeah, with Ansible playbooks. Um, if you heard the talk earlier this morning, the migration to uh, 4.0 sounds great. It sounds incredible because Ansible is really cool, but it's, it's complicated. And there was many um, issues that we ran into along the way um, on, on you know, Ansible, um, Upgrading GlusterFS was very difficult. Uh, the changes that uh, 3.9, 3.10, 3.11 went through in terms of certificates and containers, um, we needed a partner that could help us navigate all of the, you know, the high pace at which Kubernetes is moving. And Mark was that person for us. Um, so the NIME container deployment uh, you know, kind of infrastructure as code now. We ended up using Guacamole, which is a VNC server, uh, so it can display uh, Ubuntu desktop in a HTML5 uh, page. So now you go, if you want to use your NIME uh, desktop, you just go to a link in your browser and you're looking at your NIME desktop. And I can release uh, NIME to all of the users uh, just by updating a prod link of the image. And basically, all of their desktops change, and they see it through their browser. So it's kind of like DevOps unlocked. Um, and Tremolo created that bridge because we needed to be able to access the window shares. So um, it dynamically would be able to figure out who they were and create a mount to their window share as the correct uh, credentials with uh, Kerberos and FreeIPA as a solution. So um, OKD provides uh, authentication, RBAC, built-in Docker registry and viewer and multi-tenancy, but it provides a whole lot more. Um, and I'm gonna get into kind of all of these other things that it provided us with uh, the combination of Mark's Tremolo security. So let me just uh, go through. This solution is, uh, sorry about this, just kidding jump over to some notes that I have here. Um, right. Um, so this is scalable, automated deployment of compute resources to meet the demand. Um, manageable in terms of built-in health checks um, so the pods would get restarted if they uh, weren't available uh, as an endpoint. Um, you can stack multiple things in this environment, saying I need a Mongo database first, and then um, once that's up and running, I can launch something like Protege Web on top of it. Um, so you can kind of orchestrate how this uh, application, it can be multi-tiered, is, is coming up. Um, it's transparent, we know, we know um, who changed what, when, and how, down to the infrastructure, the Bitbucket commit, JIRA, all of that audit trail, um, and who's entitled, and what roles they have. Tremolo audits everything and all the changes uh, that we might be giving someone a role on the cluster. Um, so we have complete transparency, and that makes regulators happy, um, which is really important in this uh, age, uh, especially for a hedge fund. Um, so isolation, um, we can 
provide a way to move this code through our dev, QA, and prod environments. One of the things in prior experiences, when you deploy applications in different environments, those environments aren't the same. Here, uh, as infrastructure is code, you're, you can be pretty sure your dev and QA and prod environments, because they're kind of coming up uh, in the cluster itself, are going to be pretty similar. Um, just changing what uh, service account or user ID you're going to have running these various things. Um, and that leads to an automated deployment. I touched on the fact that in the Nine container, I could just roll out a prod link, and all of the um, people using the application would, their pod would restart, and they'd be running the new image. So we're able to do kind of dynamic uh, blue-green type deployments. Okay. So um, this was really cool in terms of access to Windows resources. Our security is built in around Windows AD. OK needed to fit into that model. And we required almost no change to our Windows Active Directory structure. Um, <clears throat> we achieved isolation and multi-tenancy for our users with no passwords. Um, single sign-on, we, we didn't want people to kind of come into this cluster world and be like, wow, now I need to store passwords as secrets to be able to get into my database or you know, talk to a file share and get you know, some data from a file system. Um, so the Kerberos integration uh, from Tremolo really helped out there, as well as leveraging things like uh, you know, uh, dynamic mounts for SIFTs um, so we could talk to these shares. Um, Free IPA sort of provided that Unix user ID um, mapping between the Active Directory world and created a real Linux user to kind of match that we could leverage and still talk back to the resources in the Windows world. Um, so that, that was a really excellent integration. Um, as I said, this solution is secure by default out of the box. Um, we needed AD authentication. We realized uh, we needed to onboard users, um, create security without passwords. We wanted this to be self-service. We didn't want, you know, if someone wanted to look at a Windows share, I didn't want to, to kind of provision that for them. They can go to a website and ask for it, and we can either let that happen or have a human intervention saying, OK, I approve that a request. Um, it would, Tremolo provided workflows to automatically create um, the persistent volume claims that would let people talk to those drives um, and created projects dynamically based on their user ID. So it, it really uh, let us, um, as a very small organization, kind of deliver like an enterprise uh, solution to our developers and end users uh, to be able to leverage uh, a cluster and the dynamic nature of a private cloud and a small hedge fund. So, okay, um, yeah, sure, go ahead. Um, right now, we, well, we've created the ability to create multiple clusters, which is great. Uh, one, one of the things fun about working with a startup is you can say, hey, I, I want to be able to spin up multiple clusters uh, quickly. So we, we have a mini cluster that's got a worker and a master, and it's very small, a few cluster nodes. And then we also have a production cluster that's got six workers. Uh, three masters, three infra, a logger, and three cluster nodes on it. Yeah. So, but anyways, uh, thanks for your time, um, and that's it. Great.